Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of uh, Linux Kernel uh, Net Device Data Structure. In this episode, I would like to show you uh, the basic uh, Net Device uh, Data Structure uh, source code, and then I'm going to show you an example uh, code which I, you know, uh, use in uh, Traffic Squeezer as such. So, in that uh, code uh, which I use in Traffic Squeezer parses, uh, you know, traverses the Net Device uh, list actually. So that gives you an idea of uh, you know how uh, the net device uh, data structure is used actually so let's just uh, hop on to my system and uh, you know let me show you the source code and uh, you know we can do a code walk and we can just uh, discuss about uh, you know net device data structure so guys uh, here is the net device uh, data structure uh, you know uh, header files and it should be situated in uh, you know include linux uh, net device dot h so uh, I can uh, show you directly the source code and uh, just walk you through. So in this uh, header file is where the struct net device is uh, declared, and after that, uh, you know, you can see some of the, you know, net device uh, data structure APIs. Okay. So let's just, you know, see the net device uh, data structure. So it has uh, many other uh, related uh, structs, one to maintain, uh, you know, stat stats and uh, things like that. Actually. So here is the data structure uh, where it starts, and uh, the entire uh, comment section will have some amount of uh, documentation about, you know, some of the important fields actually. So let me just show you, you know, what sort of fields uh, you have to start uh, looking for, you know, once you start learning about uh, net device uh, data structure. And uh, also, you know, some of the fields is, you know, very much prominent where you may often do, you know, your uh, code uh, in terms of accessing those fields actually. So, you know, one of the important field is this uh, name, which is the character type, you know, uh, string buffer. So, this should hold uh, essentially the interface or, you know, port name. So, effectively what happens is if you do an if config command, you know, for each hardware port, you know, a net device uh, data structure instance will exist. So, this will exist like a linked list actually. So, and what you are seeing, uh, I'm sorry, what you are seeing over here, you know, is the single uh, instance of that, uh, you know, linked list chain actually. So, this name will hold the name of the interface and uh, this contains the size of uh, the string as such. So, and the next uh, important uh, field is the MTU. You can see here, you know, this uh, shows the exact uh, MTU of that uh, specific port. So, once again, if you do an if config, uh, you know, whatever your MTU value it denotes, it is actually fetched from, uh, you know, net device uh, data structure. And apart from that, it has all these, uh, you know, stats. And these stats, also you can uh, see you know somewhere here net device stats in the top so yeah somewhere here you can see the net device stats if you see and compare uh, you know if config command output you can see the rx packets and tx packets errors drop and all these things more or less will coincide with this uh, net device stats actually so if you see somewhere the net device tracks will be you know defined inside the net device data structure so we can just search this so i'm just uh, basically searching this so yeah as you can see this is uh, now we are inside the net device you know it, it has an instance of these stats actually so you know effectively whatever you see in config many of the stats are coming from that data structure and apart from that, one of the most important, uh, you know, uh, variable in net device uh, data structure is this IF index actually. So, what happens is once you boot the system, for each port it will have uh, an interface index. Say something like uh, this local loopback interface may start with IF index uh, 0 and then followed by 1 and followed by 2 and things like that. So, this uh, will give you uh, the way to access uh, you know directly the interface uh, which is denoted by this uh, interface index as you can understand uh, 
you know when you do a c programming you don't need to do a string compare uh, with cor corresponding to that interface you know name instead you can directly use this index and uh, you can identify you know which uh, specific uh, interface instance you are using actually so these are some of the important fields and uh, you know uh, the other fields uh, you can eventually learn about it it will also contain uh, you know the device status and uh, things like that as you can see it has uh, also other status uh, fields like you know promiscuous mode and uh, you know operating state and things like that and effectively this is uh, a linked list uh, node so it will definitely have uh, you know a specific uh, uh, field to uh, specific uh, fields to maintain that linked list as you can see here so so, so that's what it is and uh, you know followed uh, by this uh, struct you can uh, see you know it's supported uh, apis so you can see various uh, net device apis actually so you have these apis and through this you can access your uh, net device data structure and uh, as i always uh, say in my videos uh, you know you have to uh, check first if there is any api uh, which is directly available before you do any kind of uh, you know raw access uh, to the data structures in the linux access so yeah, although these are uh, existing in the form of linked list i don't suggest uh, you do any kind of manual uh, node adding a node and removing a node by yourself as well. so you should first check uh, its corresponding api and you should uh, strictly use these apis and uh, what happens is uh, in case if you are hopping on to another version of uh, linux kernel source sometimes these apis inside the api there may be relevant changes done according to the changes done in the data structure actually so it is always important uh, you check the apis and uh, you know use uh, the data structure uh, through the apis actually you don't need to kind of manually access especially these kind of complex data structures uh, you know with a linked list uh, you know manual access actually and uh, other than that uh, in my next video i am going to cover about uh, you know some more examples of uh, adding an uh, interface and removing an interface and things like that actually so next i am going to discuss uh, you know my traffic squeezer code which uses the net device uh, you know data structure so here it is guys uh, this is my you know traffic squeezer uh, source code and in this source code i would like to show you where uh, uh, as an example i am using uh, or accessing the net device uh, data structure so what happens is i uh, this is my proc interface and whenever you do a specific settings uh, uh, which is meant for the traffic squeezer kernel and uh, you know you do in the gui and effectively it is uh, you know configured in the gui in the kernel uh, through the proc interface actually so this is my proc interface code so you can see uh, somewhere here i will be assigning uh, you know the lan port and i will be assigning the lan port and things like that so you know this comes from the user space uh, via a simple uh, you know proc uh, uh, access so what happens is uh, you know the interface which gives uh, you know the lan port uh, id and uh, it actually gives uh, suppose if you want to select a specific interface as a lan port suppose if zero as a lan port and say for example eat one as a van port actually so what happens is if you configure in the gui you know the instructions will come here and the name of the interface will come here so i need to have a mechanism to store a global variable you know for the van port and to store a global variable to maintain this you know lan port index actually so earlier uh, if you see my traffic squeezer code which is more than uh, you know couple of years old i'll be maintaining the name of the interface as well, so which is a string type so as you can understand what happens is for each and every packet you know when i check a specific packet how it has to be processed you know if if i store uh, the interface name and i have to do a string compare for each packet so now it is not any more required uh, with the net device uh, you know data structure api which i have written uh, so instead of now what happens is i get the name of the interface the name of the interface is converted to interface index so for that i have to you know traverse the net device uh, data structure linked list and uh, you know find uh, the corresponding uh, you know interface and uh, you know find its corresponding interface index actually so this is what i effectively do 
in my traffic squeezer code over here so, so this is one of the best examples i can give you so uh, uh, as i uh, told in my earlier videos i am not a kind of uh, person who likes uh, much about uh, kernel module programming and give you examples of module programming as such. So, you know, those kind of things uh, are required in case if you are just started your, uh, you know, writing, uh, you know, kernels uh, code as such. Whereas in my case, I am uh, involved in writing Linux kernel code, especially in a case like this, uh, you know, through Traffic Squeezer uh, since past more than six to seven years by now. Actually. So, you know, I would love to give examples directly. I can show you uh, some of the portions of the traffic squeezer code. And, uh, you know, this forms an effectively a good example and a good use case. You know, when you do something and how far it, uh, you know, helps you in the real, uh, real time uses it, actually. So, this is the thing, guys. This is a global variable and this is my API which I have written. And uh, let me show you this API source get device, you know, interface index and this you know, you can almost assume, say, let me just type here. So, this API is effectively is something like this, ETH0. So, this takes, you know, interface name and then it returns, you know, interface index. So, this is what effectively happens here. So, let me just show you the API source code which I have written. Yeah, so I have written somewhere in this, you know, bottom portion. So this is the source code. Actually, this source code I have referred uh, somewhere uh, in the Linux source itself. And as I say always, never ever, uh, you know, you should reinvent a wheel and, you know, uh, try to do something which is already existing. And moreover, you have to stick with the kernel standard and you have to stick with uh, especially the kernel, uh, you know, current uh, source code APIs as such. So, assume uh, after few years, uh, this entire way of uh, you know, doing things are changed in the kernel, then you have to, you know, change your code also uh, to make it in sync with this, uh, you know, changes done in the kernel uh, by the kernel folks actually. So, anyway, so let's just get back to my source. Uh, so, uh, this I have got it somewhere in the kernel source. I don't remember really from where I got or maybe it is fragments of code I have collected and then, you know, put across and uh, so i have written my own code so that uh, you know i can get this api which directly gives me the interface index so in this case what it does is it does uh, traversing uh, of the net device uh, data structure linked list and you can see you know this api gives me the global linked list first node actually so first net device and uh, you know init net actually so this is the you know this is the overall structure of it and uh, you know seriously i myself is not an expert uh, really why we give this init net and things like that so you need to understand the kernel is huge actually and when you are uh, thinking of getting a solution you know you need to understand uh, you know you get fragment of code you know you are looking for and make sure it works and uh, that's all about it actually so you know when you have uh, extra time you can actually look up on this api and uh, where is this init net is defined and things like that actually so i don't uh, so far had any time to do these things and i just borrowed the code and i have done changes so that it suits my you know uh, this requirement actually anyway in this case uh, you can see first net device and this returns a net device uh, data structure instance so that is why you know it is storing it in this net device, uh, you know, data structure pointer called dev. Now, what I am doing is I need to skip, uh, you know, returning anything, you know, if uh, the LAN port assigned as the name none and the WAN port assigned as the name none as a part of traffic closure, which means uh, there is no LAN port assigned, there is no WAN port assigned. In this case, uh, I will be returning some, uh, you know, TS port none and things like that. This effectively holds a value of minus one actually. Since, uh, you know, you can understand this net device uh, data structure instances, uh, its interface index uh, starts from zero and then it, it, it will hold an integer, uh, you know, positive numbers actually and it starts from zero actually. So, in that case, I can uh, effectively return this minus one and what I have done is uh, there is a, you know, while loop as you can see, you know, till uh, it will, it will just work unconditionally because this dev you know, if it uh, has an instance, it is going to have, you know, uh, a, you know, effectively a pointer pointing to this net device, uh, 
data structure and it can't hold a value null as such. So that's why this while will be successful. And then in this case, I'm checking, uh, you know, I'm passing this name. So this will have something like each zero or something like that. So I'm just checking, uh, you know, string compare this dev name. And as I have shown you in the, you know, net device uh, source, you know, what happens is, uh, you know, you have the name of the interface, which is defined as a character, you know, string actually. So I'm just comparing string compare name and, uh, you know, this name I'm comparing with and if it matches, and as you know string compare returns uh, zero if it matches so i'm just uh, uh, not checking it is uh, equal to zero or something like that directly i'm using this bang so that uh, you know if it is a successful compare and what it is going to do is it is going to return the you know dev interface index uh, you know directly from this api so this is what effectively i need i need interface index of that uh, you know net device instance which corresponds to this name actually and if it doesn't match and this uh, you know if condition is not successful it is going to execute this uh, next step which is going to you know hop across uh, the next uh, linked list node of net device uh, you know global list actually so this uh, api directly gives uh, the next node which it is pointing in case if it doesn't find the next node or it is the last node what is going to happen is it is going to return uh, null and since uh, in this while loop uh, it will check if uh, you know while dev and in this case if it is returning null it is going to come out of this loop and uh, by default if you give some kind of wrong uh, interface name uh, something like it 5 or something which doesn't exist you know in this system you now effectively what will happen is uh, the command which you send through proc interface is going to be unsuccessful and uh, you know nothing will be changed across actually Whereas if it is successful, it is going to get this interface index and it is going to return, you know, from this uh, API and it is going to come out of this API. And in case, uh, you know, if this statement is unsuccessful and, uh, you know, till it finds uh, the matching, uh, you know, uh, this thing, uh, the name of the interface, you know, it is going to traverse across the next node and it, it will happen again and again in this uh, while loop. So this is a very good example, as you can understand. You know, I would like to definitely start an example like this rather than, you know, registering your own uh, interface and, you know, uh, doing something as an example given in the Linux device drivers book actually. So rather than that, this is how, you know, you should understand, you know, you should, uh, you know, register devices and things like that once you start writing a device driver code. But there are cases that, uh, you know, you may not be a device driver guy. And you need uh, net device access somewhere in your, uh, you know, Linux kernel stack actually. So, you know, you need to access the net device somewhere here. You know, you don't need to write uh, any sort of device registration or something like that actually. You need more and more APIs you need to learn, uh, you know, in this fashion actually. So that you can effectively use, uh, you know, whatever net device uh, data structure uh, link list which is created. And you should know how to use that uh, link list actually. So this is the best example I can give. And uh, definitely I'm happy to start, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, a source code walk, you know, by giving this example as a case, actually. So that's all, folks, uh, for this episode. I think uh, you guys, uh, you know, loved watching this video. And uh, please do post your, uh, you know, queries and uh, comments in uh, YouTube uh, comment section. And please do subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.